Well, good Thursday morning. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon on this Christmas Eve Eve. The time is now 6.30 a.m. on this December the 23rd. How you feeling? I hope that you're feeling good this morning. I'm Wanye Reese. Stepping out the door, you're definitely going to be feeling cold, Taylor. Yes, you will. You're going to want to need the jacket, the long sleeves, the whole shebang because <laughs> it is a cold morning. But at least we have clear skies. Temperatures right now making drop below freezing, 31 degrees. But otherwise, besides the cold morning, you really can't complain. No rain in sight. Temperatures across the area sitting in the 30s as well. 34 in Wrightsville, 37 in Swainsboro, 33 now in Warner Robins, 32 right around freezing in Forsyth and Monticello. So a cold morning, but with the winds, we may feel even a little bit colder to our south, places south of Bibb County. Now today, temperatures will actually start to rise, so make sure to bundle up the kids at the bus, bus stop, but then they can shed their winter coat as they head towards recess. Temperatures will be in the mid 50s by then, and then you won't need the car seat warmers to warm you up because We'll be back into the upper 50s, low 60s by the time you're going home or you're sitting in that carpool line waiting for your kids. So I'll talk more about the Christmas Eve and Christmas Day forecast and what we can see beyond that to end the year. Thank you, Taylor. Let's start this half hour with the latest on COVID-19. Right now, Central Georgia hospitals are taking precautions as COVID-19 numbers start to rise again in our area. Dr. Sandy Duke with Atrium Health Navison says based on state numbers, it looks like Georgia is heading towards another surge. Duke says right now that surge is driven by the Delta variant, but the CDC models show we will see the Omicron variant a lot more this winter. In past waves, we've seen hospitalizations rise just weeks after cases do, which has Central Georgia hospitals preparing. Looking at our number one around messaging about vaccine, COVID safe behaviors, social distancing through the holiday season. Um, we're looking at our monoclonal infusion center. Uh, we offer monoclonal antibodies, which have been shown to decrease the need for hospitalization and bad outcomes. And then obviously staffing. Uh, as you know, staffing remains a challenge for all of us through all industries in Central Georgia. And so we're looking at our staffing and how we uh, can shore that up in preparation for what's certain to be uh, some increased demand. Dr. Duke says currently they have 21 COVID cases across all of their campuses, and that number is expected to rise. As 2021 comes to a close, we're getting a clearer picture of the true impact of COVID-19 last year in the U.S. New numbers from the CDC show the virus was the third leading cause of death in 2020 behind heart disease and cancer. Life expectancy also dropped nearly two years. The CDC plans to release more precise numbers so we can get a clearer picture of who was impacted. Well, a tool that could help in the fight against COVID-19 and the newly high transmissible Omicron variant has been approved by the FDA. Pfizer's antiviral pill is now authorized for high risk adults and children 12 and older. Studies show it reduces the risk of hospitalizations and death by 88% if given within the first five days of symptoms. So here's how it would work. Three pills are taken twice a day over the course of five days. In November, the Biden administration announced it was buying a supply of the pills to be ready for this approval. Pfizer says it's ready to start delivering in the U.S. immediately. While COVID cases tick up around the world, there's new hope on the vaccine front. COVAX, the global initiative to vaccinate the world, shipped its 800th millionth vaccine dose. The World Health Organization says half of those doses were shipped in the last three months. Our projections show that supply should be sufficient to vaccinate the entire global adult population and to give boosters to high-risk populations by the first quarter of 2022. The WHO says while vaccines are the best way to prevent the spread of the disease, vaccine mandates should be a last resort. They say instead countries should work to increase public trust for the vaccines. Meanwhile, the Peach State is joining nearly two dozen other states in a lawsuit challenging the Biden administration's vaccine and mask mandate for the Head Start program in schools. The governor's office says the mandate applies to all programs funded by Head Start and would require all staff and certain contractors and volunteers to be fully vaccinated by January the 31st. Governor Brian Kemp argues the administration's plans are unwarranted and inappropriate. This is the fourth lawsuit filed by the state of Georgia to challenge the Biden administration's vaccine mandates. And the U.S. Supreme Court says it will hold a special session in just over two weeks to hear arguments on the Biden administration's vaccine or testing requirement for large employers. That will happen on January the 7th.
New information this morning, just days after Atlanta's mayor reinstated the city's mask mandate, others are now following suit. Officials in Cobb County issued a new declaration of emergency masks are once again required in county buildings. However, this does not apply to private businesses or the school district. The declaration will stay in place until January the 22nd of next year. And Savannah's mayor Van Johnson also taking action against rising cases. He announced the city would also reinstate a mask requirement inside city owned buildings. In a tweet, Mayor Johnson says he will continue to follow the science. Moving on now to three things that you should know this morning. A popular restaurant in Macon's Vineville area is now shut down after a fire. Around 10 yesterday morning, several calls came into the 911 center about a fire at the Greek Corner Pizza on Vineville. Just take a look at this video right here. Interim Fire Chief Shane Edwards says firefighters saw flames shooting out of the back corner of the building. Edwards describes the damage as moderate and located mostly towards the back of the restaurant. But the heavy smoke also damaged the dining area. The owner was the only person inside the restaurant and was able to get out safely. The investigation into how the fire started continues. Deputies in Bibb County say they want to find this woman right here on your screen in connection to forgery and fraud. They say earlier this month, the woman stole someone's identity and withdrew their cash from banks in Macon and Milledgeville. If you know who this woman is, you should call the Macon Regional Crime Stoppers. That number, it's 1-877-68-CRIME. That number one more time, it's 1-877-68-CRIME. And there's a new eye in the sky in Macon. The Macon Bibb Law Enforcement Foundation donated a mobile camera system to the Sheriff's Office. The system sports two cameras along with the speaker system, security lights, and flashing blue lights. It can be operated from a cell phone or a tablet. Sheriff David Davis says the camera system cost around $26,000 and will be used at large-scale events like the Cherry Blossom Festival. Let's get you to some news happening across the state. The Roswell community mourns this morning after the loss of a high school quarterback. Robbie Roper died yesterday after complications from a procedure. Robbie's coach held a vigil for the team last night. A family spokesperson says they are asking for privacy right now and will release funeral details at a later date. Right now, the state continues to deal with a low blood supply, but there's a new initiative to get Georgia's to donate. Now the American Red Cross of Georgia is teaming up with the NFL to give away two tickets to Super Bowl 56 in Los Angeles. If you schedule an appointment anytime in the month of January, you'll be automatically entered to win. The lucky winner will get entry to the NFL tailgate, round trip airfare to L.A., three night hotel accommodations and $500 for other expenses. A South Georgia judge is now taking legal action to stop a Camden County site from launching commercial rockets from coastal Georgia. Now, we told you about the spaceport proposal earlier this week on 13 WMAZ Morning. The Federal Aviation Administration approved a license for the site. A Superior Court judge issued a temporary restraining order barring the purchase of 4,000 acres. A hearing is set, though, for January the 5th. I want you to check this out with me. Earlier this week, a SpaceX rocket launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida and on board along with supplies and Christmas gifts for the International Space Station crew was two Georgia Tech satellites. Years of work and hundreds of tech students have had a hand in making this possible. Now, Max Koloff is one of the students involved in working on the satellites. He just got his master's degree in aerospace engineering and headed straight to the Florida coast to watch his hard work shoot for the skies. And, you know, it's it's I'm just getting to see, you know, some of these things come to fruition as I'm graduating. We, we were able to get um, some folks back down here for the launch. We kind of um, had some people come back together and um, really we were able to see the fruits of our labor. And good news, the launch was successful and those satellites will soon be circling the world. The holiday season is in full swing and after Christmas, many people will get ready to celebrate Kwanzaa. It's a seven day celebration honoring African heritage and African American culture. Starting December the 26th, people will focus on seven principles. You see them there on your screen. The first is unity, then self-determination, collective work and responsibility on day three and cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and finally, faith. The Kwanzaa Cultural Access Center of Macon is promoting events each day of Kwanzaa. The first principle, unity, will be the focus on December the 26th at the Douglas Theater. The program will include a tribute to Charles Henry Douglas at this theater is named in his honor, celebrates 100 years. There will also be live dance performances. Kwanzaa was first celebrated in 1966. Interesting fact, there are more than 2,000 different languages spoken on the African continent, but Swahili is the most common. Kwanzaa is a Swahili phrase that means first fruits. 
Well, the time is now 6.39 a.m. It's nice to see these Kwanzaa celebrations happening here in Macon. Taylor, mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of work that is put into that program. Right. And you should definitely go check it out if you have time. I mean, the, the dancing and just mm -hmm. learning more about the culture and the history, it's all worth it. I was just about to say the same exact thing. Like, it's just like learning the culture, getting to know other cultures. And like you were saying, like, there's so many different things that go into African and African-American history. Yes. Very many things. Like, even saying how, like, Swahili is not like, it's the main language, but, like, there's so many there's, different ones. Exactly. There's so many languages that are spoken in Africa. So, very interesting. Mm -hmm. and I, oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Go ahead, Taylor. No, we're just not having a good little communication. <laughs> little banter. I know. We could literally have, like, our own podcast, probably. Oh, that's a good idea. A little uh -oh. side money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Let's get oh back serious. Boy. Okay. <laughs> no, switching back, switching back to what we're doing right now, our actual job. Um, <laughs> clear skies. Good, good, good morning on tap. No rain in the forecast. Clear temperatures. Now in Dublin, you're at freezing, so you keep, 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 keep on dropping. But one thing to know, and actually, my mom called me yesterday. She's like, Taylor, I have like a meteorology question for you. And I was like, Okay, mom, what's up? She was like. Why is it getting so much lighter now? I don't think people realize like after the first day of winter, we start to get yeah. brighter, even though we are in the winter months. So while it is dark, we're actually going to start to really, really get brighter throughout December. We only gained about two seconds worth of daylight from yesterday into today. So not much, but my mom even noticed it. So maybe just a good little difference. She's excited that, you know, we're seeing sunshine kind of returning back into the late 5 p.m. early 6 p.m. hour. So around the area temperatures are going to stay in the 30s before that sunrise comes back into the picture. Temperatures in Macon right now 31 degrees 35 in Atlanta. Some 20s as you head towards Alabama, North Alabama and North Georgia. Thankfully, we're sitting in central Georgia, so temperatures are not that cold. But today we will actually warm up pretty significantly to the 50s and 60s. 59 is the forecasted high for Macon and Warner Robins. 60s as you head towards Dublin by daily to Eastman places south of Bibb County. And then as you head towards Atlanta, maybe a little bit colder. So if you're going to Hartsville Jackson Airport today, make sure to bring a jacket because it probably will be cooler than it is in Macon. If you're staying in Macon, I would recommend that you go out to see the lights because it will be, it will be a very nice evening. Temperatures in the 50s right around sunset will get kind of cold as we head towards 8 p.m. So keep a jacket on you. And by the time we head towards 10 p.m., make sure to have that jacket because not only will it be in the 40s, but it'll feel maybe more like the upper 30s with the wind chill. Now for tomorrow, the coveted forecast, the Christmas forecast, temperatures will be back in the 60s, so plenty of sunshine, beautiful down tap right around average. Then heading into Christmas Day will actually be 10 to 15 degrees above average for both the low and the high. So a warm morning and a warm afternoon, some clouds building in. So if you want a white Christmas, you can maybe bet on the clouds, but no snow is in the forecast for this Christmas. Now we will have a chilly night, but as that chilly weather moves out, we'll have warm weather building in. That's because we have a high pressure system just to our south in the upper levels. That will give us nice warm conditions. We'll have a warming trend beyond Christmas where temperatures will stay in the 70s from Saturday and beyond, and we'll have some rain chances, chances sprinkled in for Tuesday and Wednesday. Otherwise, a pretty nice week on tap here in central Georgia. We're back after this.